I've always felt that AT&T could do a little bit more. I always felt like they always left something out on the table. Almost as if like they overlooked opportunities where they could make more money, offer more as a company in the wireless space, and just you know overall be more responsive, uh, at least from the mobile side. And it looks like there's a report coming out now that indicates all of our preconceived notions, things that we just assumed that AT&T wasn't doing. This report is not flattering. Let's get into the news on this report now. So let's take a look at the story coming out from AT&T. Uh, the group that's involved in this kind of review is Elliott Management Company. Uh, they conducted a complete review of AT&T as a company, at least from the business management standpoint. And they conducted this over the course of about a decade. I think it spans from the very, very end of 2009 to present day 2019. Uh, the board of directors put the review into motion. I think there was a letter actually produced at the end of this report. And uh, for those of you that aren't aware, Elliott Management actually has a $3.2 billion stake in AT&T. Anyways, what this report basically sheds light upon is that AT&T has been underperforming. So issues in investments, wireless ex execution flaws and failures, uh, poor execution and business opportunities. You know, it's there's a lot of negativity surrounding this report. And specifically from the mobile side, it's kind of just it's vindication it's like just confirmation of what we've always kind of thought about AT&T that they've always left opportunity out on the table like they could have did more from the business standpoint so let's compare what AT&T and Verizon have done over the course of the last decade so Verizon moved very quickly in LTE and 4G uh starting back in the you know 2008 2009 with infrastructure build out Verizon really kicked it into high gear and by 2011, 12, and 13, and even 14 with advanced LTE features, Verizon really uh, hit the hit the ground running very, very fast. And AT&T kind of lollygagged and didn't really pick up the pace like Verizon did. And Verizon really jumped out far ahead. Uh, now, and then you kind of think about what AT&T did and how it was different is Verizon really seems to have this reputation as having the best LTE network. And even to this day, that still seems to kind of be true. Most people think Verizon is the best way to go. Uh, T-Mobile during all of this time. If you go back to 2011 with the failed merger, uh, T-Mobile has grown substantially. I mean, exponentially, really. Uh, what we saw happen with uh, T-Mobile after the failed merger with AT&T uh, was unprecedented. So, you know, you take T-Mobile with the Uncarrier Initiative, unlimited data plans, no contracts, getting rid of those things, AT&T never really had an answer till much, much later after the growth of T-Mobile and the expansion of Verizon's network had already kind of moved leaps and bounds ahead of AT&T. So what has this resulted in? A strange, uh, un, I don't know, unexplained way that AT&T didn't have a bigger market share. So it really makes no sense for AT&T to not have more market share even today. So you think about it, they probably should have more. In fact, some measurements and some metrics say that T-Mobile has operated at a plus 600 market share number. I'm not sure how that's calculated, but AT&T had a negative 400 market share number in that same metric. And then to make things even worse, to add insult to injury, because obviously this is very recent, uh, leadership issues, a total bureaucracy failure within the company on the management side. Uh, it seems like the search for new CEOs is very lazy. There's little to no searching. Uh, there's no homework, right? They're not really trying to find, uh, you know, new talent, young talent, uh, you know, new ideas, uh, fresh approaches to business success. That just hasn't been in there. And, you know, they just replaced and moved and kind of manipulated the company in a way with these new CEOs. They did it all in like a week, which means they had things kind of premeditated and they didn't follow through on any type of substantial search. It was a bunch of like, slightly vertical moves from pre-existing CEOs and business managers. So you take into account all of these things that this particular uh, report highlights, and you look at the first net contract, which is huge, a great thing for AT&T, and they've got the DOG contract, uh, excellent spectrum assets. Their 5G current standing is phenomenal. They probably are the best position to succeed in initial rollouts in 2020 and succeeding in the long term. 
So they've got the spectrum, they've got the 5G plan, they've got the network infrastructure, they've got everything in place. There really is no excuse for them to not be further ahead and to really be taking the lead in pretty much everything mobile. So, you know, these are changes that I think should have been addressed years and years ago, but it's that bureaucracy that kind of got in the way. A lot of people in comfy positions that just didn't want to go and, you know, the company has been profitable, so nobody really wants to rock the boat, but it looks to me like they could have did more and made even more money. And I think that's where these shareholders and those that have these stakes in AT&T are pretty upset about this whole thing. And just, you know, I reported a couple weeks ago, there was in the search reportedly supposed to be some female CEO candidates, and that never solidified really never really became a serious thing it was supposed to be but it didn't and i think that kind of alludes to that huge bureaucracy problem that you have within a company like at&t and not that it's unfounded i mean we see these things all the time but i think it's just one of those things that you could see big companies kind of go through these things because these ceos and these other business management and leaders you know just won't get out of their own way to help the company grow uh so that's kind of the report that's the synthesis of everything you guys let me know what you think of these elements from this report i've always said that at&t should be way further ahead it makes no sense that t-mobile has closed the gap so fast and quickly uh not that they've closed the gap completely but the fact that at&t has all their you know fingers and arms into all these different business segments and they've got this potential for a great network i mean they've got the resources the money the know-how to do it, and they have let Verizon overtake them uh, for many, many years, and they allowed T-Mobile to kind of close the gap a little bit. So you guys let me know what you think of this story. I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions, so drop me a line in the comment section below. There's links in the description box if you'd like to get in touch with some of the SMT communities. We've got the Discord chat. We've got the Patreon page. Links in the description for that, as well as a PayPal share link if you'd like to support production here on the SMT YouTube channel. And, of course, big shout-out to Rafi for his donation to the SMT YouTube uh, production. I want to thank you for that. And, of course, um, Jeremy Clifton for his recent uh, contributions as well. Thank you guys for your continued support driving production here on the SMT YouTube channel. I think I'll leave it at that. Please like this video, share this video, helps the channel grow. And if you haven't done so already, go ahead and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss an upload from the SMT. I hope you guys have a great rest of the day. I am the SMT and I will see you guys on the next video. Peace.